All right, let's see if it's working. Can't tell. Hold on. Yep. All right, so let's talk about elements of life. Now, I'm going to cut these, uh, th this set of notes in half. Okay, I'm just not going to throw it all at you. I want you to digest this uh, a little better. But look how I'm starting out. Elements of life. Okay, and there's that, that remember phrase. Remember, remember. Living systems require constant input of energy and the exchange of macromolecules. Well, if you break macromolecule, what's macro mean? Huge. What is it? Huge. Huge, big. Not macro. Macro. Huge. Means big. So these are molecules that are big. So how do you guys grow? Well, you eat food that has macromolecules and you eat those and they are added to your body and you grow. Now we're going to get to that pretty much in the next time we take notes. Let's talk about energy. Energy, energy. Energy, uh, I was always taught, is the ability to do work. The definition of energy is the ability to do work. If a car is started, it has a full tank of gas, it can carry people around. It has energy. It can do work. Okay? Uh, the definition says the capacity to do work. The only time a human being usually doesn't have the capacity to do something is when they're dead. And then they don't need energy. But any other time, you're breathing, you're moving, uh, you're sitting here writing like mad, you have to have energy in order to do the work of taking the notes, interacting with me, and everything else. Now, some of you may recognize some of the types of energy. Potential energy. Potential. That means it's there. There's energy there. And it's ready to be used to do work. Think of a car on the top of a mountain you put it in neutral, you give it a push, it starts to go down the mountain. When it's sitting at the top of the mountain, before you give it a push, it has a lot of potential energy. Lots of potential energy. So gravity is, is stored there. The car will let gravity pull it as it releases it. Uh, it this here uses a stretch spring or a stretch rubber band. You stretch a rubber band out. As long as you hold it, there's energy ready to go. As soon as you let go of it, it snaps back and it releases that energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic is the energy, and that's correct, that's the one I recognize, the energy of motion. So you hold that rubber band, you hold it for a split second, or let's say I get squirrely, I get a rubber band, and I come up to Adam and I put it right on his shoulder and I pull it back. That's potential energy. But when I actually let go of it, snap. Now all of a sudden you see it's kinetic energy. So you release that energy. It's going to hit his shoulder. It's going to like sting a little bit. He might think it's funny. He might get mad. He might cry. Who knows? Who knows? Depends on the rubber band, I think. And then thermal energy. Feel your neck. Are you warm? Thank God. You're all alive. That means you are releasing heat. Energy in the form of heat. You're releasing energy in the form of heat. Have you ever uh, touched a hot car engine? Do you know if we could develop an engine that could burn gasoline completely, that motor would be not hot at all because it is incomplete burning and it's not very efficient. It creates heat. Isn't that wild? So we're not like burning hot. We're pretty efficient at burning our, our energy, our taco, or our burgers, or whatever. We're not like super hot. So that's thermal. Thermal. Now check out some of the things. When you eat like an ice cream cone, that's chemical energy being changed into motion, right? 
radiant. So if you get cold, you go out, step outside in the sun, you feel that energy. But a tree is going to take that radiant energy and change it over to chemical energy through photosynthesis. Uh, when you put gasoline in your car, that's chemical, and it's being transferred over into the energy of motion. And then electrical, you stick your finger in a light socket. You're going to feel it. It's probably going to burn your finger or anywhere it touches you. Have you ever heard of those stories that people get struck by lightning? You can actually see the path the lightning takes because it burns their body as, they, as it leaves. Lightning likes to go from the sky, well, from the ground, back to the ground. We don't want to go there. I've even seen people get hit with like 220 and wherever they touch it, it leaves a, a streak where it goes to the ground, so it burns them. But that will create thermal. And perfect thing for that is even a light bulb. A light bulb will do that. Or your heating element. Okay, questions so far? Okay, now, last thing. We live in a dimension of space and time that follows law. Have you ever heard of the TV show, I Dream of Genie? Or the TV show that's old of, called Bewitched, where the lead character, she's a witch, and she can make anything disappear or, or up here? Or what is that, Aladdin, where he rubs the lamp, and the genie gives him three wishes, and he says, oh, I want a million dollars, or boom, there's a million dollars. That is impossible because of this particular law. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Now, since we live in this universe, our bodies have to follow this law. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one thing to another, or it can be transformed, say like into heat, or light. Whoa, you guys just touched your necks. You can feel it. So that means the energy that we're not using is being transformed into heat. I'm glad it's not light. Because you'd be a lot warmer and it'd be bright in here. They could also be sound. I'm giving off energy in the form of sound. Can be transferred or transformed. So when you eat a taco, all the energy in that taco, if you could take that taco and dry it out, take all the water out of it, burn it, catch all the heat, see how long it takes it to boil water, you can calculate how much energy it has in it. But our bodies will eat the taco, and it's able to do that. And it's transferring that energy from the taco into your body. And now in the process, you're getting all those big molecules that are helping you keep your body running and help you grow. Okay, so living systems, which you and I are all a part of, they follow the rule. They follow the rule. You know, think about burning a log. Before you set the log on fire, does that log have potential energy? It's not a trick question. Think about it. Does it have potential energy? If I light it on fire, will it release energy? Yeah. So guess what? A log has potential energy. But if I burn the log, it's going to give off light, heat, it's going to snap, crackle, pop. You're like, yeah, this is cool. Right? The funny thing is if you could capture all the ashes, all the water that turns into steam, all the energy and light and sound and smoke, and you put it back together, it would weigh as much as the log you just burned. Because think about it, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Only transformed or transferred to something else. Now, this is why we need constant energy. We have got to have it. Human beings can last roughly three months without food. Me sitting here talking and, you know, getting animated and oh, it takes energy. And if I don't keep replacing it, it's eventually going to catch up to me. What if I, uh, I start working out with Mr. Stevens? I say, hey, I want to look as big as you. 
And man, that first day, man, I'm ripping the muscles, I'm tearing it up. And I get up the next day and I'm like, what do I need to help my body heal? Protein. Protein. So I gotta take a big molecule and then it'll help me. Follow along? It's easy, it's pretty easy. So you guys are growing, you know, eventually reproduce, you're going to, uh, gotta stay organized. I'm not growing anymore, reproduction has stopped, but I've still, I've gotta stay organized. I've gotta keep, oh, I gotta keep my protein good, I gotta keep the right amount of fats in my body. I gotta store, I gotta keep everything going. And so, I gotta keep eating food. Now, right here, the energy, is stored in chemical bonds. You got to put a star by that. And you're going to see that. Your body breaks those chemical bonds between atoms or molecules and it releases energy. And that's stored away in your food. Like right now, I have a nice storage right here for a, a bad day. I hope never comes. You know, I, I got some storage. And as long as it stays right there in my fat cells, it's pretty good. But if I start hitting a lean time, my body's gonna go in and start taking that and it's gonna start breaking down that fat molecule, molecule by, or atom by atom, and it's gonna be releasing a lot of energy. Man. Now, glucose, now this is a formula I want you to memorize. C6H12O6, C6H12O6. Right now, if you had a taco for lunch, I don't know what was for lunch. If you had breadsticks, your body right now is digesting that and it's going to turn that breadstick into glucose. And you're either going to burn it or it's going to go to your liver to be stored away or it's going to go to your fat cells where it's going to be put away. Or it's going to like use it. I got this started a long time ago. Cross country, I went to an IU coaches symposium. And one of the physiologists at, at IU said, coaches, you, after your workout, you need to get your runners to drink chocolate milk. Because it has glucose already, and your muscles will absorb it, and you'll recover faster. Here's a cool thing. Think about it. Even if you don't like, if you like some chocolate milk, try it. You get done with a workout, and you think, man, that sounds gross. Try it. Cold glass of chocolate milk goes down. And you know how sometimes it takes you like after a workout, you feel weak for like 20 minutes or so. As soon as you do that with the chocolate milk, you start to feel better instantly because all that glucose, your muscles are going, glucose! And it sucks it in. And as it does, I scare you? Kind of. It sucks in the protein with it. And so it gives you that energy. So you recover quicker but it has glucose already there. All right, so this is the molecule of energy right here. This is what we run off of. Our muscle fuel is glucose. I don't know if you might want to write glucose. And start memorizing it. You never know. It might be for a Dobson dollar next time. I'll say, hey, get out a piece of paper. Write down the formula for glucose. I might forget too, who knows? Anyway, okay, any questions on the notes? Now's your time to ask. The only stupid question is what? The one not asked. Okay, this is you telling me you understand. <laughs>